There we go. Good morning, my friends. Welcome to Tom's Tinkering and Adventures. The adventures from the kitchen today. Um, I made uh, cinnamon rolls, I think, last week. And they went, they went over pretty well here with the family. So I have had a request from the family to make some Cinnabon-style cinnamon rolls since there's only really one uh, Cinnabon in the area here, and that's at the airport. And supposedly that's on the other side of the gate, so you got to be flying out to get Cinnabon here in the Anchorage area. So I looked up a um, uh, Cinnabon copycat recipe, and I got up a little bit early this morning, got started on it, and I've already made the dough. It's sitting in here, stuck it in the oven to rise. Kind of an old trick. I think I remember that from, from my mom. It's a little bit cool in here this morning. The uh, wonderful weather has gone away a little bit. Not too bad. Uh, it's not raining yet. It's supposed to rain here. It doesn't look like it's raining yet, but there's some wind and it's a little bit cool. So it's a little bit cool in the house. Uh, cooler temperatures are going to affect your yeast and it won't allow your, your bread dough or your cinnamon roll dough to rise. So if you uh, put in the oven, turn the oven light on, it will raise the temperature to about 75 degrees in there. So it's a good little trick to have if you have a little bit, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit cooler home. So, oh, and I also got uh, some honey oatmeal bread that we made last night. Waiting for that to finish rising as well. So let's see what we got in here. This has been in the container about an hour, a little bit more. And it has risen considerably. So there's our dough. I've already got a lot of stuff started here. So um, I will post a link to the recipe that I used for this. And I adapted a couple things. But uh, it was pretty easy. Like I said, it took about an hour for this to rise. And maybe... 20 minutes or so to make it. So, I already got some flour out on the countertop. And I have mixed up my um, cinnamon and brown sugar. I got some butter, partially melted butter here. Let's see if we can get you set up here. Above my workstation. We can make this work. Well, it's not being the best in the world, but we'll get it. Just a moment. Stand by for technical difficulties. Good morning, everybody. There you are. Figured you might be here, Mr. Robert Roy. Join me for some cinnamon rolls this morning. All right, bird's eye view is working. And there we go, our dough is out. All right, so if you remember from last time that I made uh, cinnamon rolls, we just kind of roll this out. Let me grab my rolling pin. I'm gonna roll this out into a uh, rectangle, squarish item. Put a little bit of uh, canola oil in here so she doesn't stick. We'll see how it works. It's working pretty decent. And the dough has a nice consistency to it. So I actually watched a couple videos on uh, how they do it in the Cinnabon uh, restaurant chain themselves and uh, and they got some nice stuff. They got a little machine they feed this dough through. I've never worked in a commercial kitchen. Um, I did as a lot of uh, teenagers do. Worked in fast food which is not quite a commercial kitchen but it would be interesting to see how that's done. Kind of interesting. I'm looking, looking right at the screen here. I got my sister says to leave some some space for the uh, the butter and the uh, cinnamon so that the uh, dough sticks. And yeah, that's exactly. 
I saw exactly how they did it there on the uh, video they were showing on how they made Cinnabon. This dough has a really nice consistency to it. Very easy to work with. Maybe even easier than my uh, my favorite guy, Steve, which I, uh, if you watch my other videos, I uh, linked his video on there. So if you'd like to try to make the other cinnamon rolls, which are very easy to make, not that these are any more difficult, these may be just as easy, but uh, the channel that I like to use for making bread is called Artisan Bread with Steve. And I have linked that on my other cinnamon roll recipe um, videos that I made. So take a peek at that if you're interested in making bread. You're supposed to roll this out to about a quarter inch. And it's not getting very square, but I think we can figure something out with that, huh? Robert Roy wants to taste it. Well, come on by, buddy. Your family's waiting. I still have to get a hold of them. I can give them a call today, actually, your family. Go over there and make them some food since uh, I'm over here and you're over there. There we go. We're mostly on the screen even here. My sister says I should take Robert Roy's family some rolls. Well, you know what? I might make him some bread. I can look up how to make pandasol, but I'm sure I've heard from Robert Roy that his mom is a pretty good cook. So, in fact, I think he said that she offered to make me some lunch when I was coming through town, but I was kind of in a hurry to get here. All right, so now I have some butter. I kind of half melted it. Yeah, I kind of want this rolled out a little bit more, maybe. I don't know. I'm afraid to roll it out too much. But thank you very much for joining me for this adventure because this is only the second time I've made cinnamon rolls, and now I'm already on a different, different recipe here. So I don't know if that's wise or unwise, but, uh, you know, it is an adventure. All right, so we'll try spread some butter on here. And this is pretty much how I saw him doing it on the Cinnabon channel thing that I watched. And the video that I watched, there was a, several videos that had Cinnabon style um, cinnamon rolls. And I watched a video and I read a recipe and they were both very similar. But anyway, in the comments on the video, someone had replied back that that's not quite exactly how they do it because the gentleman in the video had taken this butter and just creamed it up with the um, brown sugar and the cinnamon. So they said, no, we spread the butter on the dough and then we sprinkle the cinnamon brown sugar mixture on. Now, when my sister had commented on here to leave some space at the end, she was talking about when you roll it up, the last time I rolled them up, they weren't sticking very well. So, if we leave some space on the end here, that should allow the dough to stick better. But like I said, I'm not, uh, definitely not a cinnamon roll expert here. So, I'm learning as I go. All right, so we got the butter spread out on there. Set that aside. Here is um, one cup of brown sugar, three tablespoons of cinnamon, that's a lot of cinnamon. So we'll just, in fact here, you're just gonna have to trust me. I did wash my hands before I started, but uh, I don't know if they ever do it on the TV shows. I don't watch a lot of cooking shows. These are gonna have a lot of cinnamon in sugar in them. Just off the screen here, I see, but I'll be on the screen momentarily. Hmm. 
And I did make an uh, event for this. I scheduled a live event, so I don't know how that worked. I'm uh, actually still pretty new to YouTube. So if any of y'all saw that there was a live event scheduled, let me know. And I don't know if I followed the correct protocol or not. Because I scheduled it on the computer. And then, um, of course, I'm filming this on my phone. Yeah, I'm gonna get to the frosting here in a moment. My sister was asking about what kind of frosting I have. I'm rolling, I'm almost off the screen here. There we go. Let's see if I can pull them back so you can see the end here or, there we go. So there's that last two inches. I didn't put any butter. I didn't put any um, of the uh, cinnamon brown sugar mixture. And it's really not sticking all that well. Let me, let me try something here. My finger's wet. I'm gonna do it just like a postage stamp. I don't know if that's gonna work or not, but we're gonna try it. <sighs> Look at that. I'm learning. I'm learning, ladies and gentlemen, I'm learning. Who says you can't teach an old tinkerer and adventurer new tricks? Yeah, they look quite nice. Now, let's see, look at what I found laying around here. I think this is for my granddaughter. Use duct tape? <laughs> Robert Roy, if I see you using duct tape in your food videos, I'm gonna laugh. I think you need to implement it somehow. But uh, I am using dental floss. Like I said, I think this belongs to my granddaughter. I found it laying around here. Oh, let me grab my pans here, excuse me. So last time, I think I used this one here. And I found this one, just digging around. I think I'm gonna use both of them. I'm going to just put like four rolls in each one and let them rise really big. Because if you ever had Cinnabon, they're always pretty big and fluffy. So I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna try to put four in each one and let them just go mondo sized here. And we'll see how that works. All right, so on to the uh, dental floss. Last time I think I just cut it in half and then cut it in half and cut it in half again. And I'll probably just do that because measuring is not my strong suit. So that's kind of in half. Look at how nicely that works. That's amazing. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good half. I'm pretty pleased with myself. Hope you all are pleased with me as well. <laughs> okay. A sharp knife would probably cut these just as well, but this is kind of fun. Look at that. It just slices it right up. Put one right in the middle here, right in the middle of the screen. Cutting them fairly large. Looks like they're about two inches or so. Ta-da. Look at that. That looks nice, huh? All right, so there's one. We'll put that one. Let's put that one up like that. There's two. Oh, these things are gonna expand nicely. I better preheat my oven. Bake. How about we go 400 degrees? I saw a couple different, uh, saw a couple different uh, temperatures. One said 350, and one said 400, and one said 10 minutes, and one said 20. Um, I think I'm gonna go more for 20. I'm really not, uh, really not one who wants to have super doughy cinnamon rolls. I don't know about the rest of y'all, but uh, I don't want them, of course, overcooked either. But oops, we're off the screen. Apologize for that, but uh, beautiful. See that? Yeah, I don't think getting eight of them in this pan would have worked. There's our first four. Maybe I'll flip this one over because it does look nicer. Yeah, that looks much nicer. They almost look like I know what I'm doing. Don't tell anyone because I don't. I don't know what I'm doing here. I'm making a little bit of a mess, but uh, actually, I, 
it's kind of funny. One of the things that I enjoy is cleaning the kitchen. So uh, don't invite me over. I don't want to clean your kitchen. But for some reason, I do find that cleaning the kitchen kind of soothes me a little bit too. Let's get that right on the screen so you can see the old uh, dental floss trick here. And when you're done, you can floss with this and it tastes like cinnamon rolls. I'm just kidding. I don't know if that's true or not. There's one. There's two. And these are going to be so much better than Pillsbury. And this is where if I would have made a perfectly uh, rectangular um, piece of dough, that would have turned out a little bit more uh, perfect looking, but it's going to taste just fine. Maybe not going to look perfect. And that one will try a little bit more water on it to keep that dough on there. But if it falls apart, it's still going to taste good. It's just not going to look as perfect. Now, those look pretty nice, huh? Let me move some things out of the way here. Excuse me, you can take a look at those. Enjoy them. They don't look too bad. They almost look like uh, they could be on a cover or something. You can't eat them. You can't eat them raw, Robert Roy. I suppose you could. I don't know. What do, what do you think it tastes like raw? I'm not going to try them, but uh, I'm going to move them right over here. They're just off the camera. Excuse me a moment. Let's see if I can get this camera over here for you. I almost put a rolling pin on my foot. There we go. Got them on top of the oven. I need to put this, mount this thing to my head. There you go, cover them up with the sack towel, as they call it, flower sack towel. And now, here comes my favorite part. Cleaning up this mess a little bit. I don't know if, I, if you watch my other videos, um, a plastic um, bowl scraper works really nice for this. See that? This is not a plastic bowl scraper. Let them rise for an hour, no, not an hour and a half. My sister, no, they don't need to rise quite that long. They've already, the dough has already risen. This is a little bit different recipe. I've added a, an additional amount of uh, yeast to this recipe. So this one, they're only gonna have to rise for about 15 minutes. It's really all they have to rise for. There you go. See how nicely that thing works for cleaning the uh, countertop up? You bought me a bowl, my sister says she bought me a bowl scraper. I already have bowl scrapers. Um, I have some at home. I already bought some. I love them. I know a young lady who lives in Alaska who could use them. But, uh, oh, okay. She says I need to visit. I'll swing by. Don't worry. I am planning on, uh, here, let me put this up here. Oh, look at that. Hands-free device. I like this. A little bit off. There we go. We'll tilt that way. I do plan on visiting family, friends, and that sort of thing on my return trip out of Alaska. If I can get out of here, that is. It seems like all I'm doing is, is cooking, which I don't have a problem with, but I will be hitting the road at some point, I think, about 10 days from now. So if, if you're joining my channel not to see cinnamon rolls and bread and that sort of stuff, but you want to uh, see my recaps of the uh, adventure, riding adventure, and see where I'm at, and and uh, hear about what I've seen and that sort of thing. It'll be about uh, 10 days from now, next weekend. We're going as a family up to Denali National Park. Uh, Denali is uh, formerly known as Mount McKinley, the highest mountain in uh, America. So that ought to be pretty interesting. I love nat uh, national parks, always a good show. And uh, yeah, Sarah Palin will be there. Robert Roy says, I guess everyone in Alaska knows her. She's like a mini celebrity here. All right, so these cinnamon rolls over here, covered up. Oven is preheating. They'll need about 15 minutes. I was asked about the frosting. 
I've already got that started in here. So I got a third cup of cream cheese buried under a cup and a half of powdered sugar. I've got some butter kind of melted and some vanilla. So we will mix that all up. We'll mix that all up as you're hanging out with me for this adventure here. We'll uh, probably wait till we put those in the oven. I don't know, what do you think? Should I do it now? We'll see. We'll see. I'll tell you what, why don't we mix that up while we're waiting and then let me see if I can get this thing to work again. Okay, it's back. And go down on the bowl, look at that. I'm getting better at this every time. All right, so yeah, it's a third cup of cream cheese, one and a half cups of powdered sugar. I think I got six or eight tablespoons of butter. A lot of butter in this recipe, let me tell you. If, uh, if you're having heart trouble, don't make this recipe. Because you'll probably have a heart attack if you eat them. But it's Cinnabon, so it's probably worth it. I don't know. I like Cinnabon. I have a very, very big sweet tooth. Uh, all I've been making on my channel mostly is bread. I've made cinnamon rolls, but uh, a lot of people who know me know I like to make bread, but desserts is probably my favorite thing to make. I make a lot of desserts and then I eat them all myself. I don't know how I'm not a bigger person, but I do get out and run once in a while, which helps. All right, let's see here. All that butter, cream cheese, powdered sugar, some vanilla. Anyone else here never measures vanilla, just uses the cap? I mean, how much vanilla do you ever use? It's usually a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon, so cap full will get you there, I think, every time. All right, so. This is the uh, not so great part because it's gonna be loud. But you do get the uh, bird's eye view. Robert Roy wants to know why I run when you can drive. Well, you never know. You never know when your car's going to break down. There's that cream cheese frosting. Yeah, looks very similar to the uh, frosting you get there. And I'm willing to bet that the uh, cinnamon rolls I made the other day, which turned out pretty good, if you were to put this frosting on them, you could have fooled a couple people for... Um, Cinnabon. We'll see how much better these are. I adapted some things on the recipe, which, like I said, considering it's only my second time making cinnamon rolls, I maybe should be following the recipe exactly, but it did call for all-purpose flour, and I think I even put that as my uh, screenshot at the beginning of this video, but I use bread flour. Bread flour has uh, more gluten than all-purpose flour does which gives you a little bit more airy texture. So I think it's gonna, I think it's gonna provide a little bit nicer cinnamon roll. We'll see how it turns out. Hey, Paul, how you doing? I'm reading upside down here, but I can still read it. All right, so there's our, there's our icing. We made that now already and the uh, rolls have not gone in the oven. But that's okay. We're letting them, letting them sit up here. There we go. Oven says it's preheated. Good to hear, Paul. Good to hear. Good morning. So the next step on the agenda, Robert Roy knows, is make some Navy style coffee here. Now, uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but my my daughter and my son-in-law, well, and my son, they're all in the uh, Air Force. They're all in the Air Force, and I'm a Navy, career Navy guy. So I like to give them a lot of crap, but they do have coffee in the house. So 
I think nothing will go better with some cinnamon rolls than some good old Navy style coffee. And uh, the last time that my, well, I think it was the second to last time that my mom and my brother were visiting me like two years ago, I made some coffee and uh, they both about lost it because I made it too strong for them. But it's just the way we go in the Navy. We make strong coffee. Just, I hate that light behind me. It's killing me. We make strong coffee. And uh, I don't know about the rest of y'all. How do you like your coffee? I like my coffee uh, strong. I like my coffee black. Uh, but I will add some stuff to it every once in a while if it's crappy coffee. I don't really know what crappy coffee is, though. I'm not too picky. There we go. Thanks for joining me. The cinnamon rolls will probably be going in the oven here in a couple minutes. Show us your crusty senior chief coffee cup. Now that's an interesting topic there, Robert Roy. So if any of y'all know any uh, crazy Navy people, or I don't know if it's just Navy or military, or maybe it's crusty old people. For some reason, a lot of the uh, Navy chiefs if I can get this thing to stand up on its own. There we go. A lot of Navy chiefs seem to be pretty proud of their coffee cups. And uh, they, they like to uh, not wash them for some reason. Now, I am not one of those. Excuse me a moment. I am not, I am not one of those crusty guys who doesn't like to wash my coffee cup. I always thought that was pretty disgusting. Um, and it's kind of like a, a sense of pride for, for some of these people to uh, see how long they can go with their coffee cup until the inside of it is stained to a charcoal texture. And uh, I just never got into that. Didn't like it. And I thought it was kind of disgusting. And uh, one of the things that I remember doing before I made chief in the Navy was I went into the chief's mess and I washed several of the coffee cups did that as a prank because I knew what it uh, what it meant to some of these people but I also knew it kind of annoyed me so yeah I got them good I guess I don't know tell you what this coffee's almost gone so we're gonna make it extra strong there you go just like I said strong Navy coffee even though we got Air Force people in the house they'll drink it and I think the coffee will go nicely with the cinnamon rolls if there's any left what are y'all having for breakfast this morning besides uh, joining me here? I mean, I appreciate it, but I hope you're having something good for breakfast. If you, if you get so inclined, give yourself a little bit of time, you can make these cinnamon rolls. It's definitely not something you can just get up at the last minute and make, though. It does take a little bit of planning. There we go. And just like that, coffee's on. Pike Place Roast. Starbucks always gets me. Robert Roy asked me if their force uses creamer on their coffee. Well, here you go. What is this? Sweet cream. Looks like they got ice cream creamer. Oh man, Paul's rubbing down some ribs. You gonna cook it them up, cook them up here, uh, smoking them, or how are we cooking them, Paul? We've been cooking on the barbecue the last couple days here in uh, wonderful Alaska because it's been nice out. And uh, yesterday we made some uh, sausage, reindeer sausage. It's always a big thing. Everything they sell are oh reindeer, reindeer this, reindeer that. I think it's for the tourists because reindeer is just caribou, which is just kind of like another deer and uh i don't know it's okay they have it on pizza um you know reindeer sausage like i said we went to a fourth of july thing and that was the big thing everyone was selling oh get your reindeer sausage and uh actually i was eating one of those and this guy came over with a camera and i got on the interviewed for the news i don't know if i got on the news or not but he was asking me about it hey how are you liking the, the food here at the at the event and i'm like well i'm having this and that it was kind of interesting. All right, coffee's coming down. Let's see how these things look. 
I should probably read this again. I guess I just let them go for about 10 or 15 minutes. Yeah, they're, they're getting a little bit bigger. Holy smokes, you got brisket coming off and ribs going on, Paul. How long do you cook the brisket for? Smoking them, so I know they're taking some time. How about we let that go about five more minutes and we'll throw those in. I don't know how exciting uh, TV this is, watching me put stuff away. That's not really TV, YouTube. But I do appreciate you joining me here early in the morning. And... Like I said, I got about another 10 days here. 12 hours on there for the... Oh, that sounds amazing. Those are going to be good. I'm going to have to swing by your place, Paul. I can make you some bread to go with that. Um, Robert Roy, do I do dishes too? Yes, I do dishes here. Um, anytime I'm a guest in someone's home, I like to try, to try to help out a little bit, you know. So every time I come here, it's kind of a, the running joke that they save the dishes for the last three days so that I can do the dishes. But... You know, I'm visiting my family. It's my family. They're, they're, they're going to take me in regardless, but I like to help out a little bit and try to make things a little bit less stressful rather than more stressful. I don't know if you all have had house guests. Uh, even if they're friends, family, after a while, it, it just becomes a little bit stressful. It just does. There's nothing you can do about it, no matter how much you love them. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's a little bit stressful. So I knock out the dishes. We uh, try to help cook a thing or two and clean up a little bit and of course like I said my daughter uh, and my son-in-law are both in the Air Force so they're busy and uh, we try to help them out come on over to Ontario Canada Paul you know what there's a fair possibility I may I'll have to look at the look at the map and see where I'm going to end up on the way out of here I would love to go right back through uh, British Columbia and all the national parks and the ice fields again I think it wouldn't bother me a bit to take the exact same route because it was so freaking beautiful. Um, and if any of my friends or family are watching this video and are considering going to Canada, by all means, make it happen. Um, I'm sure that's not the only beautiful part of Canada, but I haven't seen a whole lot of it. But, oh man, it was so nice. If I would have stopped and take pictures or video of everything that uh, was beautiful, I wouldn't be 200 miles into the country yet. So. It's just nonstop. Ontario, I'll have to see where that is uh, in regards to my route and see if I'll be heading that way. I have no idea. Like I said, I wouldn't mind going the same route. Uh, I also wouldn't mind going a different route. Who knows where I'm going to end up. I have uh, lots of family in the Midwest. So who knows if I'm going to swing over and go through the, the exciting countryside of Canada and then drop down into the exciting countryside of... Um, of, um, the U.S. You get so much cornfields and soybeans and wheat, but uh, I don't know. To me, it does does have a little bit of beauty. I grew up there in the uh, the fields, as it were, and uh, it does bring back a lot of good memories to me and a, a lot of memories of hard work. Tell you what, growing up on a farm, growing up on a farm, uh, you'll never ever work a hard day again in your life if you take any other job, I think. The Navy was very easy. Military was very easy for me. I just felt like I was on vacation for my entire career after growing up on a farm. So for those of you who, who grew up in a rural environment or uh, worked on a farm, here's to you, because that stuff is not easy. Definitely sets a, sets a base for your uh, work experience for the rest of your, your life. Yeah, I, I don't think there's anything that can match it so if if you ever spend a summer throwing hay bales oh my god <laughs> and I haven't done that in many many summers and I don't think I have what it takes to do it any, uh, anymore it would take me quite some time there we go coffee cups are out thanks for joining me for the coffee here it's coming out nice and oh, looks amazing it's gonna be good coffee gonna be good cinnamon rolls well I don't know about the rest of y'all but maybe we ought to throw these things in here Not sure how long I've let them raise for. A couple more minutes. We'll wait until the uh, coffee is good and ready. Yeah, we'll 
we'll let them go a little bit more. I was gonna make this in a couple of uh, couple of videos, but uh, what the hell? We're going. We got battery power. We're gonna keep moving. Keep moving forward here. Here's a little trick that I I get those hacks that I've done every once in a while on my videos. So if you ever buy shirts and they ask if you want to keep the hanger, if they've got these kind of clips on the hanger, keep the hanger. Then you take it home and you can cut that clip off of there. I don't remember what I used to cut that off of there, but I know I did it right here. So I maybe used a utility scissors or a hacksaw, something like that. But these things make awesome little bread clips or whatever you call them, chip clips. And you buy a shirt and get two free, two free with every shirt. There's your daily hack from me. Look at that. One shirt, two free chip clips. Never buy chip clips again. You heard it here first, folks. <laughs> I got a whole drawer full of those things at home. Because my, uh, my uh, trophy wife likes to buy baby clothes here for the young baby, granddaughter. So we get all kinds of chip clips with them. Excuse me, we have to step outside a moment. The wind is picking up out here in Eagle River and we almost lost our strawberries. I just heard this thing, see that? Almost lost it. Hold on here, drop this down. Let's see if there's any strawberries in there. There's a couple. They're not really producing well, I guess. I don't know a lot about strawberries, but I think they're the type of thing you need to grow and wait for a second year to get a good harvest off of them. So we got any strawberry farmers out there? Let me know about that, but they're looking okay as far as the vines, but they're producing a couple berries, pretty small, not coming along all that great. Get your coffee, join me. There we go. All right. Well, I was uh, talking a little bit about my, my route on the way home. And I don't plan to go directly down to San Diego. I didn't go directly up to uh, Alaska either. I'm log in the computer here real quick and bring up Google Maps. All right, so I have family in South Dakota, Minnesota, Iowa. I have friends in Montana. I got friends in uh, Nebraska. Probably got friends everywhere. And uh, anybody got any? Uh, any cool places I should go in between here and there? I really don't do GPS. I love paper maps. Paper maps are my favorite here, so. Here we go, we got the beautiful Kenai Peninsula here of Alaska. Yukon Territory. Now there's a cool place I want to go to right up north of here. It's going to focus. I don't know. Not the, not the best, but you got Inuvik up here in uh, Northwest territories. So on the way home, on the way here, I went through Whitehorse and then cut up to, to Toke right before Fairbanks and then dropped down on the way back. Let me see if it'll come up onto here. Maybe hard to see for uh, those of you at home, but uh, we got Dawson, Dawson City here. So there's a, a new road they have built. The road used to go up here and end at Inuvik. And they have completed the road from Inuvik all the way up here to Tuktoyatuk. Tuktoyatuk. So that road has only been open for about seven or eight months. 
maybe not even open that long. It was completed in November. I don't know how long it's been open, but uh, it's still fairly new. And uh, that village up there has pretty much been isolated forever. Like the only way you could get there is in the winter riding on an ice road and um, flying in. Lloyd wants to know if you saw the windsock in Whitehorse. I don't recall that. I don't know, he wants to see if I get back. I don't think we're going back to Whitehorse this time. I like to leave that open this time because I would love to come back up here. The, the ride was amazing. But supposedly that little village up there is very interesting and I would love to check it out. Now, the problem with that is that the road from Inuvik to Tuktoyatuk is all gravel and there's a lot of trucks that drive on it. It's a haul road. And if it has rained in the last day or two, the gravel's extremely loose, it's wet, it's dangerous. And my buddy who's riding with me doesn't have a whole lot of uh, off-road experience. So that being said, I've already discussed it with him. And uh, if he's uncomfortable, but I still feel like I'd like to continue on, I think we're probably just going to part ways at that point and uh, he could set up camp wherever we're at, and then I can continue on. Of course, I'm not gonna do anything stupid um, beyond my own level of stupidity, which is pretty high, but, <laughs> excuse me. Uh, I, I do wanna try to be safe and, and, and smart about things for the most part, but it's really a, a goal of mine to try to make it up there. That's, that's the top of the world, if you look on the map. That's, that's way up there. I don't know what the parallel is. I'll have to check it out, but it's well past the Arctic Circle. But for both of us, we do want to get the uh, Arctic Circle. That'll be a pretty good goal. All right, the cinnamon rolls have raised up a little bit. We're going to throw them in here. They're going to raise when they cook. I hope. If not, I think they're still going to be okay. This is turning into a long video. We have a few of you are still hanging out here, but thank you. All right. We'll try 20 minutes. My sister wants to make balut. Well, first you need to get a duck and then you need to get another duck. And then once they have fertilized eggs and you have a duck embryo, then you can make some balut. We won't be making balut on my channel I won't be eating balut on my channel. Now, if I join Robert Roy on his channel, maybe we'll have a balut eating contest, but I think we're gonna have to have a PBR drinking contest before we do that. I don't know. Does anybody eat balut when they're sober, Marion? I don't know. What's your take on it, Robert Roy? Does, is it a uh, sober food or a drunk food? Because I think it's kind of like Taco Bell. I'll eat Taco Bell when I'm sober, but I don't want to. But I'll, Taco Bell's good after you've had a few beverages. Yes, people eat it sober? Wow. All right, well, I don't know as if I will. It's, it's truly a delicacy. It smells like a delicacy. All right. Holy smokes, Canada is a large country here. I'm looking at it and I don't know as if I'm ever gonna cross this whole thing, but uh, so I've been in three territories already. Uh, Alberta, British Columbia, and Yukon. If I make it up to Tuck, or even if I make it up to Inuvit, then I'll be in the Northwest Territories. Now, Nunavut, that would take some doing. But if I cross over into, uh, what a cool name, Saskatoon, if I cross over into Saskatoon and I could drop down 
into Montana, which I've never been in. I have a friend who lives there. Got family in South Dakota, family in Minnesota, family in Iowa, a friend in Nebraska who I've told I was gonna go see, but I haven't yet. And then, and see, this is kind of a long way home, seeing as San Diego is way off the map down here, but I mean, family is important. And I got a motorcycle and I got time and what the hell? I mean, I think I can make it happen. I don't know. I didn't think I was gonna ever be able to make this happen. And here I am 4,000 miles into this journey and uh, I have to go home one way or another. So, and then if I get that far, if I get that far, I mean, it only makes sense that uh, my brother who lives over here in uh, New Jersey, the little NJ right there, I mean, it only makes sense. It's only that far if you look from there to there. It's not that far. I mean, I should probably go over there too. And my sister always has a... Uh, laundry list of items that need to be done in Colorado Springs. That's on the way home as well. Everything's kind of on the way home. I mean, New Jersey's on the way home. I, I also got a friend who moved to Colorado Springs and it looks like, uh, looks like they're probably only about two or three miles away from where my, uh, my sister and my brother-in-law live. So, I mean, that would mean I'd have to stay in Colorado Springs another day. And my family there has never taken me to uh, Pike's Peak or, or hiking or on a motorcycle ride with them. So, I mean, we, we got a lot of plans we got to take care of. Of course, I do have more motorcycles in the garage that I could bring on, you know, another trip. Well, let's see. They're in there cooking up. Now, one of the things that I read up on uh, after uh, looking up the Cinnabon recipe is how to do the icing. Well, one guy said that you should um, spread the rolls apart, which I did. So I kind of followed that. I saw that on a, uh, on a video showing how they do it actually in Cinnabon, and then I read it from a guy. And then he said to put a little bit of icing on them at first because then it goes in there when they're hot, and that's what gives them that ooey-gooey, delicious Cinnabon texture. Here's that cream cheese frosting. Oh, that's going to be good. There's a lot on, on here still. Someone's got to lick those beaters. Mm, mm, mm. Might be me. <laughs> so he said to put a little bit on them when they're hot out of the oven. Oh, my brother-in-law is asking about my my facial scruff here. So the last day that I shaved that uh, Lloyd was um, December 15th, the morning of my retirement ceremony. So I'm going on, I got a whole coffee mug's worth here just about, almost. So we'll see how long um, I put up with it, how long my, my trophy wife puts up with it. Uh, I don't think she's too fond of it but that's all right. We'll be okay. It's still me under there, so. I like it just to mess with people. This light is killing me. My production values have gone down. All right, so let me see where we're at here. My, my sister mentioned Montreal. Well, that's way up there. Santa, I already said I'm a bad Santa. Don't, don't make a good Santa. Montreal's way up here. Now, I do have a friend in Maine as well. Only guy who I'm still in touch with from boot camp. He lives in Maine. Now, is that on the way home to San Diego? I don't know, what do y'all think? I think that's on the way home. So I'm up, I'm up over here. Way up over, I'm even off of this screen, way up over here. San Diego's down there. Yeah, I think Maine's on the way home. So, I mean, that might, might be a have to hit destination. I 
I've heard good things about Nova Scotia. I don't know. How long can a person stay on the road? I suppose if I could fly my lady out and visit me. She was talking about, she was talking about visiting family in the Midwest this summer. So I'm certain I can get to the, uh, I'm certain I can get to the Midwest, Minnesota, South Dakota. You know, I've never been, I've never been to Wisconsin. I grew up in Minnesota and I've never been to Wisconsin. I should probably go. Maine lobster's deliciousness. I buy lobster at Albertsons. They have lobsters here in uh, Alaska. But I suppose it's one of those things. If you're there, you should, you should hit it up and try it. All right, let me see here. Man, I can't believe you all are still joining me. I appreciate it. The Spam Museum, that's in Minnesota. Let me, let me prep this stuff up so it's ready to go on here when we're, when we're done. Uh-oh. Doesn't like it when I do that. There we go. For some reason. Oh man, we just had a we just had a, a frosting issue here. Look at that! I just dropped the uh, whole phone right in the frosting. Well, I'm gonna try it. Mmm. It does taste like the. Uh, <laughs> it does taste like the. Mmm. Cinnabon frosting. <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in this morning. Let me see if I can do this one more time here. Robert Roy, I need an upgraded, uh, I need an upgraded tripod. This one is okay. I heard you got a new one. What did you, what do you got? Did you uh, do a video on what it looks like or anything? I heard you talking about a gimbal and this and that. So it sounds like you got some kind of craziness going on with that. My brother-in-law is asking how the family's doing. Well, the family's doing good. They're not dumb enough to be up in the morning making cinnamon rolls, but I know they'll be up to eat them at some point here. I don't know where they're gonna head after this, but they are already talking about transferring. They don't have orders yet. So I won't have that reason to come to Alaska, but there's plenty of other reasons to come here because it's a pretty dang nice place. And uh, once I meet, uh, once I go meet Robert Roy's family again, once I have met his mom, once I get in their hearts, then I know I will always have a place to stay up here. And so I'll probably go over there and make uh, food or do the dishes or something, and I'll secure a place that I'll be able to stay in Alaska. Although, you know what? If you're not afraid of camping, there's so much camping here. However you want to do it. If you like the RV, if you like the tent, if you like the campsites, if you like to just go out in the woods. Now, I am version three of that. I like to just go out in the woods and find a place to set a tent up. I uh, definitely love that. I don't know what it is about it, but I just like it. 10 days, 10 days uh, journey to get here and we did have to pay for lodging one time. We stayed in a hotel one night because my buddy Ken and I were on the verge of hypothermia. It was not good, right in the rain was awful. <laughs> I've ridden in the rain many times before, but I can't say as if I've ever ridden in the rain for that long. Let's see, Robert Roy says a gimbal. I'm going to do one video once I figure out. Okay, well, I'd like to like to see what it looks like, so you should just do a video showing what it looks like. I mean, you're gonna have to set the gimbal up, but I'm interested, I'm interested in it. I'm doing the low production value videos right now, but uh, you know, it is what it is. I don't have a lot of equipment and I don't want to drag a lot of equipment with me. Circadian rhythm. That's a pretty good question. Uh, my my brother-in-law asked about uh, sleeping here. Last night, well actually several nights since I've been here, 
I haven't been able to sleep all that great. And uh, my wife is complaining about our bed in the guest bedroom being a little bit too, uh, too stiff. Well, I'll tell you what, I've been sleeping on a uh, camping mattress all the way up here. The mattress that we got in the uh, guest bedroom is amazing. Just, so there's nothing to complain about about that. I have been attributing it to caffeine. And I'll tell you what, I'm the type of person who used to be able to drink a coffee at 10.30 and go to bed at 10.45. But for some reason, I've been getting a lot of caffeine, uh, like jitters and stuff lately, especially if I have caffeine in the afternoon. And I don't know what it is. Um, I don't know, has anyone out there ever had something like that happen to them um, that quickly? I mean, I've had, caffeine rarely affects me. Every once in a while in my life, it um, would give me the jitters. But almost always, almost always, I had no issues with caffeine. Um, but for some reason, recently, if I have coffee or a soda or something in the afternoon, it's just been, I don't know if it is the caffeine, but it certainly feels like it. So I don't know if it's uh, just part of, part of getting old, er, not old. No one can tell me that I'm old, but just getting older. But it came on really quick, like in the last two months, let's say. If I drink uh, coffee or a soda after, uh, after 5 p.m., then I can't sleep at night. Or maybe I was so excited about the cinnamon rolls, or maybe it is the sunshine because it doesn't get very dark here. The sun goes down a little bit, but, man, it is... Uh, you could read a book pretty much all night long, I think. Yeah, drinking less caffeine and more beer. Beer doesn't help either, so I don't know. Yeah, my brother-in-law wants to know about building a sidecar on my motorcycle. Oh, let me tell you. As soon as I can get that young lady to go for a ride with me, it's going to happen. Both of my kids got uh, little mini dirt bikes when they were pretty small. Um, wasn't sure about it with, with my daughter when we first had just my daughter. And I found a little 50cc dirt bike on a uh, garage sale when she was probably about six. So it was cheap. I don't remember what I paid for it, 200 bucks, 100 bucks. Brought it home, got it running, and then proceeded to try to make it look a little bit nicer because it was pretty ugly, but it ran. And uh, she rode that around in the driveway and in the yard a little bit. But not much. I don't think we ever went anywhere. Just around in circles once or twice. And it wasn't an easy bike to ride. It was really old. And it didn't run the best. And it didn't look the best. But it worked. And it was really more a thing for me to play with. And then, um, let's see. After my son was about five or six, then we went out and we bought two new little dirt bikes. A little 50 and a Honda 80. And uh, they, both, uh, they both were riding them around the yard. And then we started going out to the desert as a family. And ever since then, everyone in my family has been riding on two wheels. So I got to start my, my granddaughter out. She's, she's 15 months old now, so I can plan this out about five years or so. And get her a little, little mini bike, start her out, something. I know my son went through a lot, a lot of dirt bikes. He had a, a 50, a 110, an 80, a XR80, an XR100, a KX100, a CRF250, and a YZ450. That kid had so many dirt bikes, but it was a pretty fun uh, family event. We'd go out to the desert, go riding, camping, and uh, I don't know. I, th I think it was a good thing. They learned about camping, and they learned about how to control vehicles, so... Both my kids did pretty good with driving. I don't remember them having any issues. And they both wanted to get in a car and drive right away, where I see a lot of young folks who don't want to. So um, that, that's pretty cool. Let's see how these cinnamon rolls are doing. Oh, three minutes left, and they're getting bigger. <sighs> see them in there? I kind of had to laugh. The last cinnamon roll thing I did, I kind of just threw it threw it together here, wasn't planning on doing it, but uh, my buddy Robert Roy talked me into trying to do a, a cooking video and I did a three-part thing.
and uh, my wife said, oh, you can't put that on there because the, uh, the oven's dirty. Everyone's gonna know she's got a dirty oven. I'm like, everyone has a dirty oven. So I spent a minute cleaning the oven this morning, so. <laughs> my brother-in-law says I could probably build an ultralight using duct tape. Well, I, every once in a while I'll come up with some MacGyver solutions to get things done, but uh, you know, it's just part of my background. Growing up in the country on a farm, we had to solve problems. There was no one else there to do it for us. So that's, that's why our, part of why our family is the way they are. We know how to troubleshoot. Yeah, Robert Roy wanted to use duct tape to put my cinnamon rolls together, so he knows. Your wife is the same, Paul? As far as what? As far as uh, being able to solve problems, or which one? Cinnamon rolls got two minutes left. I'm already done with my first cup of coffee. Thank you for joining me for breakfast this morning. I hope you're having something good. I would invite you over for cinnamon rolls, but I don't know as how many of you are local. Uh, my daughter did say that she had some of her coworkers who had watched my videos. So if you're in the Eagle River area, I made eight cinnamon rolls. There's only four of us. Oh, the dirty stove, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if you have a clean stove at all times, I don't know, you're a questionable human being. We got things to do. You can't be cleaning your stove all the time. I mean, yeah, it should be clean at some point, but you can't keep it uh, clean all the time. But I did spend about uh, a minute cleaning the big pieces off the, uh, the front where the camera will view it. So if my wife watches this far into the video, which I can't believe that she ever would, it's uh, already going over an hour. I did clean the stove a little bit, honey, so our daughter doesn't have to be embarrassed by the uh, dirty stove. And these things are gonna come out here in 24 seconds. We're gonna wait it out this time. Last time I got a little excited and I just ruined them by taking them out 15 seconds early. No, I'm certain it didn't bother them one bit. <sighs> Once again, there's no smell of vision on YouTube. There's no smell of vision on YouTube, so you're missing out on the best part here, the smell of the cinnamon rolls. Kitchen timer's off. Yep, we got you. Everything is off. See that right there? I cleaned that area. Didn't quite get all that though. What do you what do you think? Look at how they rose up in there. Hope I didn't overcook them. A little bit of crusty, that's fine. That's fine. Look at them. Oh my God. They look nice. Now, what I had read is the key is to put a little bit of frosting on them now when they're hot. Let it soak in there. Mm -mm -mm. Wish y'all could join me here. Wish y'all could join me. We stayed up late last night and played a dice game, so everyone is still asleep, but it, I imagine that the baby's gonna be waking up any time now because uh, she didn't stay up and play the dice game. Yeah, look at how nice they turned out, huh, Robert Roy? I'm going to make a homemade pizza, and I know you said you had an issue trying to make it one time, so um, I don't know if I'm going to video it or not, but I will definitely let you know how it works if you want to try to make homemade pizza again. I've got a couple recipes. Like I said, uh, if you could go back on my last, yeah, you walked a mile with the bag of rice, 25 pounds. I was wondering how that was gonna work. That gets heavy pretty quick. I was carrying something over. We had returned, uh, borrowed a pressure washer so I could wash my motorcycle and we could do the driveway here. And uh, we returned that, and it was probably four or five blocks away, and that thing was getting heavy, dragging my arm down. My sister wants me to do pizza on the grill. I don't know. I've never tried that here. And uh, I think we'll just stick with the oven. I was going to just make some, like, uh, small pizzas, like nine-inch 
pizzas and then make them to order. So if someone wants a Hawaiian pizza, they can have a Hawaiian pizza and so on and so forth. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Look at these things. I can't believe that I'm making a video. It's over an hour long. But it was either that or make three videos, two or three videos. I did log in on my wife's computer into my YouTube account and I added some things to some of my past videos for some descriptions and things like that. So if you want it, you can check it out. Like I said, go back and check out that cinnamon roll recipe. If you want to try to make the other ones, I will uh, add a description to this one once I get it uploaded with the uh, recipe because they are not very hard to make. I started them this morning what is it? So probably about three hours grand total into making them right to right now. And you join me for an hour of it. So you've seen part of it. They're not super difficult to make. They smell good. They look good. I think I probably could have got away with cooking them a little bit less. Maybe. We'll see how they turn out. I think the insides are going to be fine. The outsides maybe just a little bit on the crustier side. I don't mind that, and I think once we cover them with some more of this uh, cream cheese frosting, because I have a lot left, and if you've ever been to Cinnabon, you know they just completely slather these things down. But this ought to get in there. Well, what do y'all think? Y'all uh, want to try to make these at home sometime? Give her a shot. Like I said, I will include the, uh, I'll pin it into the comments. One of my buddies showed me how to do that, so now I know. Mmm. Boy. I don't hear anyone else awake in the house, and I'm wondering if I should just eat one of these things before everyone else wakes up. The coffee's already brewed up. gonna be awesome right out of the oven too one thing I've learned doing YouTube videos is how much stuff that I can do with just one hand I have to hold the camera I need to mount this thing like right to my head and I would have use of both hands but then I wouldn't be able to see what's going on well I'll tell you what Robert Roy what we will do is one morning I don't know what time you get up. I think you're an early riser just like myself. One morning, I will get up early. I will mix up the cinnamon roll dough. And either you come to my house or I will bring it to your house. And we'll go live. We'll wait till they're coming out of the oven and we'll just frost them. And we'll uh, go live and we'll just eat them and talk about the stupid stuff. whatever. I mean, the awesome stuff. Whatever it is that we talk about while we're eating these delicious cinnamon rolls because I'll make them again. I'll definitely make them again. I mean, I don't know how these are gonna turn out compared to the last ones, but if they're even, even as good or better, both recipes are very easy to make. Um, kind of fun, at least to me, I enjoy it. I don't know how you could mess it up too much. I'm sure you could a little bit, but I'm not sure how you could mess it up you know, in a major fashion. I mean, these things look good. Look at that. Maybe not quite to, to uh, looking like Cinnabon exactly. Like I said, I think maybe I cooked them a little bit much. Yeah, I'll tell you what. I'm not going to wait for the family. It's almost 9 o'clock. Ta-da. Let's see how these things turned out. Roy is saying I need to go on a five-mile run. You know what? The, the last time I made the cinnamon rolls, I got up early, and I made them, and there was a 5K run. And, uh, excuse me, the cinnamon rolls turned out really good. And I had a cinnamon roll. I had two cups of coffee. 
and showed up over at the 5K. And it's the first time I did a 5K running with a stroller. And I don't, I'm not gonna blame the cinnamon rolls. And I'm not gonna blame the stroller. Maybe it's the, uh, the hills here. Yeah, it's probably the hills here, the cinnamon roll and the stroller. That was the hardest 5K I've done in a long time. I had a hell of a time. Uh, pushing the stroller wasn't easy. <laughs> the baby, grandbaby did amazing. My granddaughter's name is Zelda. Such an awesome cutie. Um, she did amazing, no issues. Uh, happy to be in the stroller running with me. Um, I was worried that you know she was gonna get upset. No issues. But uh, running with that stroller was a bitch. <laughs> and there was some hills. Uh, and then I found out after the fact that all three tires on the stroller were damn near flat. So that didn't help matters any. So I put some air in the tires and I haven't taken the, haven't taken the granddaughter on a run again. So maybe, sorry about that. Man, I'm having some serious camera trouble this morning. But I didn't sleep much last night. So maybe I'll take the uh, granddaughter on another run. Here we go. The moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see how this is. Mm. Well, I won't say it's exactly like Cinnabon, but they did turn out really good. I think if I cook them a little bit less, or maybe at a little bit less temperature. So I found two different recipes. One said 350 for 10, 10 minutes. And I thought that <clears throat> seemed like a little bit low temp and a little bit not enough time. And uh, Cinnabon, I don't know about the rest of y'all, but it seems like they're just too doughy sometimes in the middle. So I went to 400 degrees and I bumped it up to 20 minutes. So I think if I was to do this again, I would do uh, maybe 400 degrees for 15 minutes and see how they looked. Mm. But they are good. Mm. Thank you very much for joining me this morning. It turned out to be a way long video, way longer than I was expecting. But it's a good Sunday morning. Um, made some cinnamon rolls for the family. Uh, I'll try not to eat all of them before everyone else gets up. Or maybe everyone else is up and they're just waiting for the video to be done because they don't like being on YouTube for some reason. I won't say that I super enjoy it, but I do like to share. I do like to have fun back and forth with everyone here. That's, I love that part, actually. I don't know as if uh, when I start getting a little bit better on production values and I start mm -hmm. editing and uploading videos or when I hit the road again, I have to upload videos. I'm going to miss the interaction with the people. But uh, that, that's what it, it just is what it is. I can't have a uh, good connection at all times. But thank you very much for, for joining me here. If you've stuck around the whole time, you're, you're more awesome than I am because I don't know if I would have stuck around this long. I will include a description in the description, the recipe for these cinnamon rolls. Play with it a little bit, make them your own and enjoy them. Enjoy your Sunday morning and uh, get out there and find your adventure. Adios.